Hi there, and a big, big warm welcome to you and to the results of your Discover Your Clutter Cure quiz. I'm so excited you decided to take the quiz. It's the first step. And I'm going to go ahead and assume you're struggling with your clutter. Maybe it's moving it from one side of the house to the other, or you have spent hours sorting through your clutter only to have it keep piling up again or something similar. Does this sound like you? By discovering your top reason, it's going to help you in a few ways. So one, feel validated in your reason, whichever one that might be. Two, understand your top reason more deeply so you can begin to unravel the mystery of why clutter keeps piling up around you. Three, give your, we will give you some initial steps to move forward. So my goal is to help you feel motivated, inspired, and excited to discover more about your reason and to move through it. I have a question to ask. How is clutter currently affecting your life? So what I mean by this is, is it affecting your health, your relationships, finances, your self-confidence? When I'm working with women, I notice how their energy shifts can happen. And when we don't act, address our reason, it can feel extremely heavy. Why I created this quiz is to help you release this weight from your clutter, regain your energy and allow for flow and abundance in your life. Now, let's talk about your top reason you received. Based on the quiz, your top reason is retail therapy. But before I do, I just wanted to help you with a little mindset shift that will make such a powerful difference in the way you think about clutter. When we hear the word clutter or say it out loud, it's almost as if it's a naughty word. You kind of feel icky saying it. And when we think about it, it can cause instant stress, overwhelm, and we may even start to shut down. You know, like that glazed over eyes type of scenario. Here's the shift I want you to start using today. Clutter is not a bad thing. Shocker, right? Just because you have clutter, it does not mean you are not smart. It does not mean that you are lazy. It does not mean you can never get organized. You are smart. You manage a household, maybe a job, you have kids and you participate in the community heavily. And your clutter is just showing you the places that you've been. We think clutter is a bad thing, but I'm here to tell you it's a good thing and shows you transitioning through stages of life, projects, and passions. We just need to get on top of it. And the realization of where your clutter is coming from or why you are holding on to it is a game changer. Okay, I kept you in suspense long enough. Let's get to the juicy part of your results. Retail therapy. Here's the positive spin I want you to put on this. You're a really good shopper. You can spot a sale a mile away, have beautiful new things in your home. You love the trends and there is nothing wrong with this. The challenge with that is when you turn to retail therapy because you're numbing and now you are accumulating all these things, spending money in a way that is not supportive. What happens is that you get a real high when you buy something on a really good deal or those two for one sales. But what can happen when you get home a few hours later is you start coming down from that adrenaline rush and you may start to feel guilty for spending the, the money or frustrated because you don't have room in your home for that item. Or you start to think, well, I'm still in the same boat as before. Nothing has changed or fixed the problem. And now I have more stuff to boot. Can you relate? Understanding retail therapy is your top reason will empower you to make different decisions. You'll have default behaviors that will have you use retail therapy as a comfort to perhaps fill in the gaps or gap or gap in your life where you are not feeling 100% happy. It could be that you are feeling lost in your career, relationship, or in your life journey. Here are a couple of strategies I would love for you to try today, and they are really simple but effective. One, leave it in the cart. So when you go the urge to purchase something online, say you've had a bad day or you're frustrated at work and you think if I buy something new and pretty, it will make me happy. Spend some time looking and put things in your cart, but don't buy straight away. Walk away, leave it in the cart for 24 to 48 hours. And when you come back to see how you see how you feel, this gives you time to reset and rethink about what you are buying. It gives you time to decide if you are buying from impulse because you had a bad day or someone really annoyed you 
or did you need or do you need that item? Two, have a fun activity on standby. Now that you are able to recognize that you may be shopping to block things out in your life, have some fun activities on standby that you know you can easily do and you enjoy. Some ideas are go for a coffee with a friend, go take the dog for a walk, meditate, do your favorite craft. Even if it's just for 20 minutes, that will be enough time for you to decompress and rethink things. Sounds easy enough, but now that you have this knowledge and strategies, try them out and see what happens. If you would love more support from myself and other amazing women who are feeling the weight of clutter, I have my free Facebook group, Clutter Free Cafe with Louise. I will be sharing more about the other reasons that you may have felt resonated with you as well while taking the quiz. You can join us just by clicking the link below. I can't wait to see you there and here's to reclaiming your space.